Hello, everybody, and welcome to Microsoft Ignite. My name is Brian Gregory from Ribbon Communications, and I'm joined by my colleague Greg Zweig. And today we're going to talk a little bit about Ribbon solutions for Teams and particularly Teams direct routing. First off, let me tell you a little bit about Ribbon. As you can see in this graphic on the right, uh, Ribbon is a combination of a number of different business entities uh, originally formed in 2017 with the merger of Sonus and Genban. Uh, since then, since then we've, we've added a number of technology providers like Edgewater and Inova Data, and most recently we added uh, ECI, an optical networking company. So as you can see, we have a, a complete and full portfolio calling on both the service provider and enterprise marketplace. Greg, why don't we talk a little bit about our experience with Microsoft uh, over the years? Thanks, Brian, and, and uh, hello to everyone. Um, so as you can see, one of the benefits of uh, a partnership with Ribbon is the number of years that we have been working directly with Microsoft. So for over a decade now, we've been involved in creating solutions that enable communications or, or PSDN communications with Microsoft solutions. You can go all the way back to Microsoft Communicator, Link, Skype for Business, and now of course, Microsoft Teams. And as a result of that, effort, we've been lucky enough to uh, do business with some of the world's largest and most leading enterprises, including the largest financial institutions, incredible education institutions, some of the world's leaders in healthcare, and then governments, including both state and local, uh, federal government, civilian type organizations, and military organizations. So uh, as I said, we're really lucky. We consider ourselves lucky to have customers of this caliber. And in addition to sort of these marquee accounts, we also have everyday businesses that might just be around the corner from you. Now, one of the things that Brian and I get asked an awful lot is so how do we actually get started with a solution to migrate from a traditional PBX type environment to Teams for calling? Well, at the end of the day, it's relatively simple. First, you need licenses. And in the case of Teams, you're going to need their phone system license. Now, you can get this one of two ways. You can buy the E5 package, or you can buy a lower package or a lesser package and add the phone system license to it. Secondly, you're going to need a connection to the PSDN, and that's where Ribbon comes in, because we provide the certified session border controllers that you need in order to, the Microsoft requires as a matter of fact, in order to connect to the PSDN. And then of course, you're gonna to have to configure your team's environment. And there's several steps involved there, but you can either do that yourself, you can use a third party to do that, or Ribbon has tools that actually can do that configuration for you. And last but not least, you're gonna need monitoring and analytics tools in order to sort of keep track of things once it's all installed. Brian, did I miss anything there? Anything that you might add? You know, Greg, it's kind of interesting the past year, uh, you know, with the mass movement, particularly to work from home and, and products like Teams gaining uh, an amazing amount of traction. It really, uh, you know, a lot of enterprises now find themselves with a, a very skilled user base, essentially, in Teams. And, uh, you know, as IT leaders, it, it gives you an opportunity to think about, okay, now that I have this user base that's very conversant in Teams, how can I maybe be more efficient in standardizing on Teams uh, for other different solutions? And I think voice and, and, and voice integration is the sort of the next logical step that, uh, that Teams offers to enterprises just to be more efficient and, and make their employees more, more uh, effective. Yeah, and I think it's likely that uh, since people are watching this video, that's one of the very reasons why they're here is because they've, they've put that investment into Teams and they're saying to themselves, how can I do more with it? Exactly. And, and along those lines, uh, as much as we, we hear from many of you how excited you are to figure out solutions for Teams, we also do hear there are things that are standing in your way. And, and there's really a few common threads that come across. One, obviously, is that many of you have a large deployment with a Cisco or a Via or Mitel or a company like that, or you may have a, you may be already have a, some sort of a cloud unified communications contract with another vendor. Obviously, many of you have multi-year uh, service provider contracts, uh, might, might be buying dial tone for X number of years at a discount. 
a number of companies have significant investments in contact centers. They, they don't want to lose those. They don't want to change those. And of course, you won't have to. And we'll talk about that later. And then you have legacy devices. And what do I mean by that? Well, that's the paging system. It's the elevator phone. It's the, um, the security phones out in a parking lot. Of course, as you move forward, all of those devices, you want to keep those. You want to include those in your business processes as you go forward. And we'll talk a little bit about the ways that you can do that. And that's really why when we talk about ribbon SBCs, we, we often refer to them as the glue to enable cloud migrations. Because at the end of the day, in addition to the security part that most people think of when they think of a session border controller, there's a whole series of other solutions that the SBC brings into the equation. It does things like it offers the ability to have redundant connections to the WAN. Uh, our SBCs can provide analog and digital trunks. We can provide analog stations. I mentioned the elevator phone, the door phone, the modem. We all forget about modems, but sadly, they still exist out there. And fax machines, too. Um, and of course, many people say, hey, I I'm interested, very interested in Teams, but I've got to come up with a migration strategy. I can't move n number of people all in one day. I have to have a, a, you know, a slow and steady process. We can help with that. I touched on contact center. Another big area where people, uh, they either have an existing premises contact center they want to keep or they have a cloud-based solution they want to integrate. And, and last but not least, don't forget about things like E911. Um, that's a critical, particularly depending on the state or, or region you're in, having emergency calling services is a very big part of the equation. And again, Brian, anything there to add? No, I think you hit on it. I mean, the one thing to me is that whole idea of migration and you know, any a business of any size is going to be challenged in moving from one technology to the next. And I think as you get a little further into the into our uh, pitch today, um, I think you'll hear some really interesting things about how we can help migrate from one environment to the next. Yeah. And uh, along those lines, one of the most common scenarios is that customers have existing premise-based SIP trunks and they want to move to Teams. And in many cases, they even might have a ribbon SBC already uh, deployed there. In that kind of an instance, really, moving to Teams is relatively straightforward. Really, all you have to do is uh, tell that SBC in the premises, hey, I want to be able to connect some of those uh, conversations to Teams, basically repoint the uh, PSDN service to Teams and, and you're really ready to go. There's not much more to it. And the other great thing about having that piece of hardware in place there, that's a, that's a place where you can add the analog and TDM services. You can do things like SIP forking, sometimes people call it simultaneous ringing to connect that legacy PBX or that contact center into that environment. And we've even added uh, just recently uh, Teams SBA so, uh, capabilities. If you're not familiar with that, that's what the Teams survivable branch appliance. It's basically like a little tiny version of Teams that runs specifically to keep phone services up in case you lose connectivity to the WAN or the Teams cloud. So all of those are, are, are great options in that environment. Now, the, the next thing to, to consider is the fact that there are certainly many of you out there saying, you know, we're at a stage in our uh, IT sort of model or progression where we're really trying to pull everything out of the premises. We want to go cloud as much as we can all the time. And of course, if that's your, your goal, Ribbon can help there as well. We have um, session border controllers that can be deployed in the public cloud in Azure or AWS. And of course, the benefit there is there's no hardware to buy or manage, right? And it's inelastically scalable. You can make it as big or as small as you needed, you get all those same security functions and features, but now everything's in the cloud. Uh, what's especially nice about that is the fact that um, once you move to that all cloud model, you don't have the risk associated with dial tone coming down into your data center or into your building where you could have something like a local power outage or, you know, Jimmy with the backhoe could come along and somehow dig up your fiber optic cable and, and, and take down your services. So that pure cloud to cloud environment basically allows you to outsource the, the quality of that connection uh, to the service provider who can deliver that right to your SBC, but you don't lose you know, your local control over security and so on. And then uh, the next uh, 
opportunity is let's say that uh, your customer thinks, well, you know, I don't really want to deal with the SBC infrastructure at all. I you know the reason why I'm going to Teams is because I really appreciate that per month, per seat business model. And I let somebody else do the heavy lifting. And for that kind of environment, we've recently announced a pure as a service model. We call it Ribbon Connect. And really what you want to do is think of this as basically a ribbon SBC sort of serving as the foundation. And then we layer on top a series of services. So we put in place a really robust SIP PBX integration service. This is actually one layer above what we offer on our typical SBCs. And we've added a layer of Microsoft Teams integration services. So this is really a, a nice time-saving and work-saving capability where actually we do all the heavy lifting to change the Teams configurations per user. So literally, now all your, your reseller has to do is enter in the IP address of your SIP chunks, enter your usernames. We have Active Directory integration for that as well. And basically push a few buttons and we do, we configure the security, we give you an account, we can integrate with an existing PBX, all sort of wrapped around a, this whole workflow portal environment. And, and best of all, there's no hardware, no software to buy. It's a per month per user basis. If you have five users, five seats, you have 500 users, 500 seats. Uh, and it doesn't matter to us if you mix and match. What I mean by that is, you could have a, a, a 2000 uh, user deployment of an existing PBX and only want to put 300 people directly on Teams calling in the first year. No problem. All you need is 300 seats. It's a, it's a really clean and simple way to move forward. And, and the other thing that we want you to keep in mind is we're just kind of giving you uh, the tops of the waves of what Ribbon can do. Now, Blissfully, I'm not going to explain this whole chart to you, <laughs> but what I really wanted to do by showing you this chart is to give you a sense for the kind of power that we can deliver in a total solution, for particularly for a very large enterprise. And I mentioned in one of the first slides the kind of marquee accounts we have around the globe. And one of the reasons they come to us is because in addition to the session border control function, we have a whole series of tools we can bring to the equation and really it doesn't matter how big your organization is. We have solutions that'll scale to tens or hundreds of thousands of concurrent calls. And we can do that because as Brian mentioned, we have this heritage of, of service provider or carrier infrastructure. So we know how to build big scalable environments and large enterprises come to us because we have that kind of expertise and we can basically deliver that kind of five nines always on environment that's critical for a business. Obviously, you're a big bank, you're an airline, you're a major hospital. You can't, it's not okay for you to be closed on Saturday for five hours doing an upgrade or to suddenly have an outage for a few hours and have to figure out how to get everything back together. That's not how we operate. We build the kind of infrastructure that service providers have been using for 100 years to guarantee always on experiences. And so that really forms the core of our whole architecture and sort of our architectural mantra. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Brian, who's just going to talk a little bit about how all these choices fit together. Yeah, Greg, thanks. I mean, I think this is a, kind of a summary of uh, what you just uh, described over the last several slides. I mean, you, you know, I think as you look at the portfolio, we certainly, um, you know, a lot of people start with hardware and I think that's been our lineage, uh, you know, our SBC 1000, 2000, 5000 is definitely where, you know, we've kind of cut our teeth. We're seeing a lot more movement into the cloud, into virtualized environments. We obviously have both those kind of things. If you want to virtualize it and have it in your own data center, you want to put it in a public cloud, you can do that as well. Um, it, it creates a much more homogenous environment for, for companies that are putting teams in the cloud. They don't have a lot of legacy hardware they need to worry about. That becomes a very um, attractive option for them. And then as a service is really, uh, it just gives you that flexibility and that ability to, to sensibly migrate from one, app, one environment to the next and, and just seamlessly do that over time. I think that is definitely the, the selling point there with the as a service offering. 
And then finally, I'll just wrap up and say, you know, we're here to give you a hand. I mean, we we have a, an, a huge partner network around the globe uh, selling ribbon solutions. We have professional services teams, service and support resources around the world that can really support any of your needs. If so, if you're a you're a multinational company that that has uh, facilities just about anywhere, we have resources between our partner network on and our embedded. Uh, ribbon resources that are here to help. Greg, any final thoughts from from you? No, Brian, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head. The one thing I would say is um, if you're interested in learning more, you know, connect with us. Visit our virtual booth. Um, uh, go online, ribbon.com, ribboncommunications.com, rbbn.com. Give us a call. We're happy to talk to you live or reach out to us on email, ribboninsidesales at ribbon.com. I mean, any of those ways, we'd be happy to connect and learn more about your situation and, and help you securely connect the teams.